Hey, it's Jason. Thanks for joining me here at the Hardy Life Outdoors. This is my new YouTube channel, but I'm not new to YouTube. I've been around for over three years, have over 150 videos on YouTube, with a lot of them being pretty popular. I'm in the process of migrating things from my old channel to the new channel, so you're gonna see a lot of that content come over here soon, as well as a lot of new content about all the things that I do outdoors. Check out the content. If you like it, please hit like, share the channel with your friends, and subscribe so that you know when new content comes out. I appreciate you stopping and hope you like the content. Thanks, I'll see you soon. It's another uh, snowy day here in Southeast Ohio. Uh, getting some snow. It's about I think it's around 30 32 degrees here today But uh, one of our themes is outdoors is always in season So we're always trying to find something to do outside. I'm not quite up for uh, any habitat work today with um, With the temperature where it is I do plan on going back and doing a few small things. I want to get some mineral out uh, For the deer my goal is to to grow some big bucks back there on the habitat oasis and I want to change out a few cameras on some uh, trail cameras. I also put a, I got a couple extras. I found a trail I want to watch and see if we had any big bucks make it through the season. So a couple things I'm going to go do along those lines. But um, what I plan on doing today with the 1025R is talking about tractor tip overs. I'm in a number of groups on Facebook and I'm surprised at the number of times I see people talk about tractor tip overs and that they've tipped over a tra tractor. And uh, the responses that come back to that, um, occasionally, I shouldn't even say occasionally, quite often I'll hear people say, well, that's one of the problems with the 1025R is it's poorly designed and it tips over easy. And what I wanted to do was spend a little time today talking about tip overs talk about what causes them, how to prevent them, and then give you my insights on what I think of the 1025R and whether it's uh, got design issues or not. So I want to start off by talking about you know, what makes a tractor tip over and not specific activities, but the physics of a tip over. I spent several years in the early 2000s doing safety training uh, for forklifts and material handling equipment. I did construction equipment, I did warehouse equipment, and as part of that, I got a really good understanding of what it takes to tip one of those devices over, one of those vehicles over. And the physics is the same for a tractor as it is for a forklift. Now they may be designed different and uh, there's different forces at work, but the reality is it comes down to a couple basic things of physics that causes a tip over. So the first thing you need to understand is center of gravity is what makes things stable. It's what makes all of us stable. Uh, you know, if you watch a toddler learn to walk, the issue that they're having is maintaining their balance, which is their center of gravity. They get leaning forward, they can't get themselves straightened up, um, and they fall down. And you see, you know, toddlers wobble all over the place. They're trying to figure out how to keep that center of gravity, which is somewhere around our waist, a little higher than our waist, um, keep that over your feet, and that's what keeps you from falling down. When you look at a tractor, the center of gravity is somewhere down here underneath the hood. That's where the weight of this tractor is centered, and as long as that center of gravity stays low and inside of the frame of this tractor, it's not gonna tip over. The challenges come in when that center of gravity starts shifting and moving around. And there's several things that can cause that to happen. One of the most common things that shifts the center of gravity is lifting loads with the front end loader. As soon as you put weight on that loader and start lifting, the center of gravity starts shifting forward. As you come off the ground, that center of gravity moves out the hood. As you start lifting, that center of gravity starts coming up with it. As that center of gravity gets higher, this tractor becomes more unstable. The same thing can happen on the back end. Imagine I don't have this front end loader on, but instead on the back, I've got a brush hog on the tractor. 
and let's assume that I've decided I need to run a, the biggest brush hog I can on this 1025R. So I've got a, a six foot brush hog back there that's really bigger than this tractor should handle. I lift that up on the three point, all of my center gravity starts shifting backwards and now I'm off, off balance to the back. So there's several things just about lifting loads from the front or the back that shifts that center of gravity. The higher the load, the higher that center of gravity becomes and the less stable that the tractor becomes. The other thing that makes that center of gravity move is the motion of the tractor. So if you think about, um, you know, if I had to think about a waitress at a restaurant, if she's carrying a tray full of food and she's walking through the restaurant real quick, if somebody steps in front of her and she has to stop, the momentum carries that tray and everything on it forward. So if she stops too quick, everything falls off the tray. That's what's happening on the tractor. I've got a load up here. I stop real quick, that center of gravity swings forward with the tractor, potentially causing a tip over. It can cause you to tip forward. If you're on unlevel ground, it can cause you to tip right to left. So there's several things happening there about physics that I don't care if you're looking at a car, a bulldozer, a front end loader, a forklift, you name it, center of gravity and momentum are things that are going to make a vehicle less stable. So what I want to talk about today, now that we've got, you know, hopefully we're all in agreement of, you know, center of gravity and how that plays in a tip over. Um, I've got a couple notes here that uh, I want to hit on, but um, you know, the question again that I want to answer is, is this tractor prone to tipping? And the question I would ask you, and please leave me a comment if you've ever had this happen. If you've parked the tractor in the barn, in the shed, in the driveway, wherever, and come back the next morning, and that tractor was turned over, leave me a note, because I want to hear that story. I contend that for the most part, this tractor is not tipping itself over, that what's happening here, we've got a couple major causes. We've got inexperienced operators, we've got experienced operators that are making mistakes, we've got um, environmental situations, and I'm not going to talk a lot about environmental situations, because everybody's property is different and that's covered pretty well in your user guide of you know what kind of angles you can be working with around here you know here around the barn it's pretty flat but you get up onto our property we got all kinds of hills and angles that put you in a, a precarious situation and then the last thing is tractor malfunctions and i won't say the tractor never malfunctions and never causes a tip over but i will say that uh, i don't see that very often so what I'd like to do is kind of start talking through those topics. So first off, let's talk about inexperienced operators that make a mistake. Uh, I'm a great example of that. This tractor, and when I talk about inexperienced operators, the 1025R, when somebody buys it, chances are it is the first tractor they've ever owned that has a loader and a PTO. Take those things away and you've really just got an oversized lawnmower here. When you add these attachments on, the PTO and the things it can do, it changes it to a subcompact tractor and it's something that most people have never dealt with. So that's where they start making mistakes. I'm a great example of this. The very first time that I was lifting loads, I had gotten a load of gravel that I wanted to move around. I pulled up the hill, I got a big scoop of gravel, I lifted it up, I had it probably, it was up hood high or higher, nice full, I want a big full one so I didn't have to make as many trips. I turned my wheels, I started backing down the hill and as soon as I did, I got it up sideways. I forget how many uh, how many wheels were off the ground. Probably I was probably on three, um, but it tipped. It didn't tip over. It tipped up in the air. I immediately lowered it and I realized what I'd done. And that was that was in 2016. I had done safety training and talked about center of gravity. I talked about carrying loads low, but I hadn't thought about it as it related to my tractor. So I did that. Um, you know, one of the first loads that I carried. Josh had a situation with his tractor where he got onto a, uh, a bank and didn't have the tractor in four-wheel drive. The tractor, he hit the brakes, the tractor took off on him and he almost tipped it as a result. So inexperienced operators are doing a lot of things that put them in a bad situation. Some of that I would say is, you know, spend more time reading and getting educated on the loader, watch videos, look for videos about how to properly carry loads, um, read the guide, take your time, work your way up to things. Like I said, I wanted a full scoop of gravel I could have started off with something smaller rather than trying to maximize what I was doing. So take it easy on what you're doing. But inexperienced operators, I think that is probably the number one reason 
that these tractors get tipped over. Number two are the experienced operators that are doing more than the tractor should be doing. And that's a combination of, um, I know what the limits are, but I'm gonna push it to its limits. I think I can get a little more out of it. It also can be a function of, I've been using this tractor for years, I feel very comfortable with it, and I get sloppy and do some things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, the third item I had was environmental situations. You know, this is hills, this is slopes. One thing that surprised me, I did a small survey on Facebook and asked people what caused their tip over. People talked about dropping a tire into a hole or a low spot or a rut. Um, that was something I, I hadn't really thought about, but certainly makes a lot of sense. You know, if you're carrying a load or you're doing something on a uh, area that's not even and this tire drops in, that center of gravity shifts and you run into an issue there. So I thought that was an interesting one. Um, the other, the last item I talked about tractor malfunctions, I talked to an individual recently who had a tip over that was malfunction related, um, but I don't see that very often. I think it's the mistakes more often than not that cause this tractor to tip over. So let's talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, let's talk about uh, what keeps this tractor from tipping over. What can you do to make sure you don't tip the tractor over before you ever get on it you can take steps to make this thing more stable first of all understand that the lower the center of gravity the better off you're going to be in terms of stability the other thing is the wider that the tractor is is going to make it more stable so when you purchase things that you can purchase and do to make this tractor more stable first of all let's make the foot look at the making the footprint wider the way to do that these rear tires you can flip them and I'm not sure that on the 1025R that these are flippable. So, you know, check with your dealer on that. I've seen it on bigger tractors that you flip it and you get a little bit extra space on the tractor uh, if you flip the, uh, the rims. Um, this one in particular, looking at it, I don't think these are flippable. Uh, I will get that answer and I'll add a note here whether you can flip the tires on a 1025R. But that's something with a tractor. On larger tractors, people do it. I know my 4052R, they flip the tires, it spread the footprint, made it a little bit wider. I know on the 1025R, one of the things you can do is buy spacers. So that gives you a couple inches. You add a couple inches, two inches here, two inches there, you've made your footprint four inches wider. That's gonna make the tractor uh, more stable. Um, so that's the things that I would say, make your footprint wider. If you've got other ideas for making it wider, let me know. Um, I would be interested in seeing other tips, but you know, the things for making it wider that I'm aware of, flipping those rims on a tractor that you can do that with, as well as adding spacers. So the next thing you do is you make the tractor heavier down low. The higher your weight, the less stable this tractor is going to be. So you want to add weight low. How do you do that? One of the things, you can have your tractor tires filled. So that's something that you know every dealership will, uh, will offer that. Get your tires filled, that adds some weight. Um, second, wheel weights. Uh, they mount right inside the rims. You add wheel weights, that brings your weight down low as well. Um, ballast box or attachment. I did not buy a ballast box with this. The guy I bought from, uh, we talked about ballast and he said with your tiller that you're buying, you've got a lot of weight that's down low in the back. Hook that up if you're going to be carrying loads. Uh, for the work that I'm doing, I don't, I very seldom am carrying heavy loads with the loader. So the ballast box, uh, I didn't think was necessary for me. I do have it for the 4052R, and I'll take some video up there with the 4052R to show you some tips on the ballast box. Uh, basically, my, my tip with that is, if you're using a ballast box, you want that ballast box as low as you can have it. If you're carrying it up high, all you've done is added weight and raised it up, which creates a uh, situation where you're less stable. So the ballast box is good. Uh, again, as well as an attachment on the back. Um, so those are things you can do that will make your tractor heavier. You can add suitcase weights to the front or if you've got an attachment on the back that'll accept suitcase weights, that's another way to add weight to the tractor and keep it down low. Uh, we talked about um, how things change when you start moving loads. The key with loads and loader, keep them low. You only need those loads high enough to clear the area that you're driving. So, you know, if you're in uneven ground, you might need to go up a few more inches, but there's no reason to have that bucket when you're driving up at the height of the hood. Um, when you've got that weight up, it's one thing to have it up, which creates stability issues. It's another thing when you are turning and that weight is up as well, because now if you have a weight out front and you make a right-hand turn, 
center of gravity swings this way, it's possible that you can tip the tractor over to the left as you make a right hand turn if you're doing that too fast. Uh, if you think about watching somebody, you know, you see people grabbing loads, scooping gravel, turn around and loading a trailer or a dump truck and, you know, they back up, they start raising the load because they're trying to be really efficient. They raise that load way up and go over to dump it. That quick movement back and forth creates stability issues. So I know there's a lot of guys out there that probably do this every day. They know this better than I do. Um, they probably understand you know what their piece of machinery is capable of and whether they're at risk but uh, that's something that for the the guy that's load doing loads uh, carrying loads infrequently and is inexperienced with it you got to get a feel for what your tractor or tractor can do before you create stability issues um, and then I already mentioned uh, uneven ground or holes that you got to be aware of where you're driving if there's ruts and things along those lines that can create stability issues for you so those are some key things to think about uh, on the topic of tip overs. So when I go back to the question of is the 1025R <clears throat> prone to tipping? My answer is no. Uh, somebody shared a note with me the other day that said, you know, this tractor has one of the widest wheelbases of the compact tractors. I think they quoted it at 47 inches, <clears throat> which in my mind says it should be more stable. But the reality is the footprint alone, while it may improve stability, it also depends where the center of gravity is in terms of the weight. So if you think about a, a pyramid, if you've got a pyramid that's this wide and it's, the weight is really high, um, or it's a very steep and your weight is really high, it's going to be unstable. So the wider and the lower that center of gravity is, the more stable it'll be. So, um, I don't look at this tractor, there's a lot of engineering that went into this. I don't look at this tractor and say, hey, don't buy a John Deere 1025R because they're, they're tippy. My recommendation is get comfortable with the tractor, read the manual, understand what, it ca what causes tip overs, and don't put yourself in those situations. As a safety tip related to that, <clears throat> keep the ROPs up. There's a lot of people that talk about, you know, they don't like the ROPs, it it's, uh, interferes with things. Keep the ROPs up, keep the seat belt on. Um, you know, you might think you want to jump off, but depending on what the environment you're working in, you may be in a worse situation if you jump off than if you just hang on when that thing tips over. So those are my thoughts on 1025R stability. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm not selling myself as an expert. So if you've got comments, feel free to share them. But I think that uh, a lot of what's going on with the 1025R and people tipping it over, when, you, when you're a part of these groups, what you see, you know, very few people come out and post, or nobody posts and says, had another great day on the tractor without tipping it over. But the guy who tips it over, he comes out and tells you right away. So just by the nature of the event, you don't hear about the people that had a safe day today. You hear about the people who didn't. So my advice, take it easy on the tractor. This tractor is not going to tip itself over. It's going to be an inexperienced operator that does it. It's going to be an operator that's doing something incorrectly, or it's going to be someone who just has missed something in the environment that puts them in a bad situation. And in that very, very seldom case, you're going to have the malfunction that causes the tip over. So anyway, thanks for joining. I hope this was helpful. I hope it keeps you safe and protects your tractor from an accident. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like share and subscribe uh, those really make a difference for us on youtube in terms of how often youtube shares our content so really appreciate any engagement you can provide um, also there's a bell if you hit that bell you'll be notified when our next video comes out thanks for joining have a great day and remember outdoors is always in season